I didn't call my husband, I didn't call my mom, and I didn't call 911. Why? Y'all, this is the most bizarre episode I have seen. Welcome back, I'm a Dr. Jones, OBGYN, and mob to four. Today, we're doing another episode of OBGYN reacts to I didn't know I was pregnant. They come in like its own series on my channel, but I love it. You guys love it. We always seem to learn something. This video is sponsored by Function of Beauty and we will hear more about them later on. This is the real story of a woman who didn't know she was pregnant. 38-year-old Tiffany and her husband Mark have struggled for years to conceive in spite of her polycystic ovary syndrome. I always felt like we needed something else to become a family. It was our dream, yeah. We had just decided that it probably wasn't going to happen for us. Infertility is so hard on people. It permeates so many aspects of your life and it sounds like they've been struggling with this for a while. They think it's from PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome. I have an entire video about that if you want to learn more and I will link it in the description below. Every month I had what I believed was a period two to three days and it was right on schedule. Tiffany used to smoke about a pack of cigarettes a day. She started getting sick. After a few cigarettes it made me nauseous. I would ask do you smell flowers? Do you smell hamburger? cooking and it would always make me sick. So super interesting. She's having some really common early pregnancy symptoms, a heightened sense of smell and nausea and also aversion. She has aversion to the cigarette smoke and to the cigarettes. However, she said she didn't notice a change in her cycles. They kept coming at regular time and there were two or three days. I don't know, I can't explain that. If you're having regular periods and nothing else has changed, the chances that you're pregnant are incredibly low. In April of 2007, she fears that she is developing painful ovarian cysts that are common with her condition. In spite of the pain, Tiffany doesn't consult a doctor. I just stopped going. I'd feel better if we went oh, to the doctor. No. I knew that the doctors were going to give me some pain medication and just send me home. Like we talked about in the PCOS video, people with ovarian cysts from PCOS don't typically have large painful ovarian cysts. Now they can get painful ovaries from having large ovaries due to the tiny cysts in them, but getting really big painful cysts is not a typical symptom of PCOS. If she thinks that she has a cyst, she definitely needs to be seen. It sounds like maybe she hasn't had great care in the past, that they've ignored her, just given her pain meds, but I think that she should at least be calling her GYN doctor. Tiffany's mother is helping the couple move when she makes a disturbing observation. Her feet, her ankles were swollen. Luckily, Sharon is a nurse. I happened to have my cuff with me, so I decided to just take her blood pressure, 195 over 100. And I told Tiffany, you have to get to a doctor. That's a really high blood pressure, and that would be what we would call severe range blood pressure in pregnancy. This increases her risk of having a stroke, and it is associated with pregnancy risks like an abruption, where the placenta comes off the side of the uterus. I suspect, because this seems to be a theme, that she is is probably developing preeclampsia. I didn't think anything was life-threatening. I ignored her. By the time Mark leaves for a business trip on April 21st, Tiffany still hasn't gone to see a doctor. She should have been seen right then. She had no history of high blood pressure in her past and sudden onset swelling in her lower extremities and not feeling well paired with a blood pressure that high, which can be dangerous for both the baby and patient. The pain was so severe that I couldn't get to sleep. So about one o'clock in the morning, I decided, well, I should finish packing while I was moving some stuff. I felt something on my leg and it was blood. That could either be bloody show, which means she's getting into the active phase of labor, or it could be what we talked about a while ago, abruption, where that placenta is having bleeding. I couldn't get comfortable. I was sweating, my stomach hurt, my side hurt, and I was having a hard time walking around. In spite of the agonizing pain, Tiffany still doesn't call anyone for help. I thought, I'm not gonna do that. I'll just wait and see what happens. Oh, oh, oh. How horrible that she felt like she couldn't even call and tell someone or get help. It kind of speaks to how she felt mistrust for the medical system because she'd been seen so many times and not gotten any answers or felt like she was heard or listened to that now she like completely gave up even looking for help, even in this severe situation that is either a very painful placental abruption or active labor. True or false, it's possible to have a light period while pregnant. The answer when we return. 
Sorry to interrupt while you're thinking about the answer to that question, let's talk about the sponsor of today's video, Function of Beauty. As you may have noticed, I recently got my haircut and some highlights put in. While I was there, I asked my hairdresser what she thought of Function of Beauty because you might remember they sponsored a video earlier this year and I have been loving their products ever since. She told me it's a great paraben and sulfate free formula that she highly recommends. In fact, she said, now that you have these blonde highlights, get the purple shampoo because it will help you keep them glowing and beautiful and hydrated for the summer. Log on to their website, fill out a two minute survey with your hair care goals, what you hope to see in your hair. They send you a fully customized shampoo and conditioner set with your name on the bottle, which is super cute. Mine says function of Dr. Jones. You use the products and you get beautiful hair. I really feel like it keeps my hair moisturized and healthy and has volume and it's shiny. I'm truly a fan. If you're interested in trying out Function of Beauty's wonderful hair care products and supporting my channel in the process, you can use my link in the description to get 20% off your first order. Now, let's get back to the video. It's possible to have a light period while pregnant. The answer, false. After an embryo implants, the menstrual cycle ends. I was gonna be real mad if they said yes. There's no physiologic way that someone would have a regular menstrual cycle and gestate in normal pregnancy. The normal period is the lining of the uterus shedding. And if the lining of the uterus sheds while an embryo is implanted, then the embryo won't be implanted anymore. It is certainly possible that people have bleeding throughout pregnancy that if they are not closely tracking or if they had irregular cycles before, they may interpret as their period. That makes complete sense to me. But if you're having regular periods and nothing else has changed, the chances that you're pregnant are incredibly low. If your periods change and you are sexually active with someone who can get you pregnant, take a pregnancy test, even if they're just a little bit lighter or they seem just a little bit less like they were six months ago. Take a pregnancy test. It, it's a dollar at the Dollar General. You just pee on it, it's very easy. I put the phone, the only phone in the house, in the kitchen. Oh! Pain was making me sick, I just had to lie down. It was very lonely and scary. I could actually feel something between my legs. She decides to investigate. I couldn't even walk to the bathroom. I was kind of crawling. But nothing has prepared Tiffany for what's reflected in the mirror. And that's when I saw a head and I can see hair. <gasps> what must go through your mind after having infertility and then not having any idea you're pregnant, being in excruciating pain but scared to call someone, deciding you want to call someone but not being able to get yourself to the phone, and then looking with a mirror and seeing a baby's head? I don't know what would go through my head. It would probably include some profanities. With her husband Mark out of town, Tiffany is completely alone and giving birth on the bathroom floor. Without medical assistance, there's no way for Tiffany to stop her labor. I like how they said without medical assistance, there's no way that she could stop her labor. With medical assistance, do you think we could stop the labor when she's crowning? Even with medical assistance, we're having a baby. I just pushed and pushed and oh, the pain was horrible. I didn't take care of myself. Now this baby and I are gonna die and it's gonna be my fault. And then I just gave one final push and it came out and then he started to cry. So then I thought maybe he was gonna be okay. Miraculously, the baby boy is alive and breathing normally. I found dental floss, so I tied off the umbilical cord I cut it with scissors. You don't have to cut the cord right away. You can just leave the baby attached. If the cord being there is restricting movement, if it's really short and you can't pick the baby up to you, then of course, find something to tie off very well, both sides of the cord, one here, one here, and then cut in the middle. That's to keep blood from coming out of baby to the outside world. But don't cut the cord if you can move around with the baby and stuff. Like, it's not gonna hurt the baby to stay attached longer and just go call an ambulance instead of trying to tie the cord off with dental floss. Tiffany makes an unusual decision. I didn't call my husband, I didn't call my mom, and I didn't call 911. I didn't really know why. I still wonder why I didn't. The doctor said that I was probably in shock. I nursed him and I just laid down with him and we slept for what had to be hours. Y'all, this is the most bizarre episode I have seen. 
Not to be a cynic, but this makes me question whether she really didn't know she was pregnant. So she, in the same breath, says, I was so worried that he wasn't okay because I had smoked and all of this through my pregnancy. I had had no prenatal care. We don't even know what his gestational age is. He could be premature. This infant needs to be checked out, but so does she. Like she was not feeling well. She's been in labor for a couple of days. Her blood pressure was high earlier. Like what? She could be in shock and not know what's going on. But that seems unusual to say like, I had the cognizance to say, oh my gosh, I could die or the baby could die. Hopefully we don't die. But, and then in the next breath say, well, I just cut the cord and, you know, tied it off with dental floss and then nursed him and we went to sleep. Like, that is so unusual. Um, I don't even have anything to say. A lot of these start feeling the same after a while, but this one is not. On the following day, Tiffany calls Mark, but inexplicably doesn't mention anything about the baby. I was still out of town. I asked her about her sis. She said she's fine and doesn't hurt anymore. When you come home, I have a surprise for you. I thought it was something to do with my birthday. The following week was my birthday. Y'all, this is too much. Why? Why? I don't understand. It's not shock at this point. Like she's completely come to terms with that happened. She's caring for the baby. And then she doesn't even tell her husband. I don't understand. I don't understand this. I knew eventually I would have to go to the hospital. I just wasn't ready yet. And I felt guilty because all those months I didn't know he was there. And I think I just wanted to be with him until my husband came home. Mark had missed out on so much that I should let him have something, let him know before I let everyone else know. Definitely understand her wanting to let her husband know first, but I, I don't know. Her behavior is very odd. Is this all from her, what she was describing earlier, distrust in the medical system, or is there something else going on? Something is not adding up here to me. Like some of the things she's saying, I definitely understand, and some of them I don't. I think this is the first time I've ever really felt kind of taken aback by the things that the people were saying. Plus she could still be really sick and the baby could too. And she's not really blaming it on the medical system, which that would even make more sense to me. She's saying like, I just didn't want to. I wanted to show my husband first. Like that is very weird. Two days after Tiffany gives birth, Mark comes home to the biggest shock of his life. Whose baby is that? I've never seen somebody look so shocked. He said, that's not my baby. And that's not yours either. <laughs> I like how he said, whose baby is that? Like. Did you take that from someone? Are you babysitting? Yeah, where did you get that baby? I thought Tiffany had stolen the baby. He started talking to me in a, in a voice like he thought something was wrong with me. Mark's surprise quickly turns to fear. My main concern was taking the baby and her to get him checked out. She didn't know she was pregnant? A simple blood pressure check reveals frightening results. 250 over 130. They said that it was life-threatening. 250 over 130. If that was really her blood pressure, that is extremely concerning. She needs to get antihypertensive medicine immediately. I would be giving her an oral antihypertensive called nifedipine because I'm assuming she doesn't have any IV access at this point. She needs to get her blood pressure down immediately because she is at extreme risk of having a stroke. He was about six weeks early. If I had known that I was pregnant, I would have done everything differently. I'll always regret that maybe I did something that harmed him a little bit because I didn't know. We just do the best we can with the information that we have at the time. Obviously she wouldn't have done those things if she knew she was pregnant, but she didn't know she was pregnant. And so you can't feel guilty for that. However, they said this baby was six weeks early. She still didn't go to the hospital for two days after the baby was born. And I try to be very, you know, non-judgmental in these, but that could have been seriously harmful to him. He and her were both in extreme danger for those two days. It could have been a bad situation. My son, maybe even dead. I still feel guilty that something could have happened to him because I didn't call 911. I'm just so grateful that everything turned out all right. I'm still processing this and how I feel about it. It had to be shock, right? I mean, she, she clearly took care of him at the house in those two days, despite not seeking medical attention. I did not expect it to go that way. I don't even know what to say. What would make her do that? Surely if it was distrust in the medical system, she would have said that, right? Or maybe she just, I don't know, I don't understand. She must've been in shock. I mean, that's gotta be it, but everybody's in shock when this happens and 
I've never seen one of these in, in real life. I've never had someone not immediately call for medical help. I don't understand. I don't understand. Two and a half years later, Blake is a perfectly healthy toddler. The birth of Blake was the best thing that's ever happened to his family. I am so thankful that her and baby Blake are doing well and more healthy. And I am so thankful for you guys for being here today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Be kind to yourself, to each other, to me. In the comments, be kind. And I will see you next time.